All right, welcome. Today we are talking about equilateral triangles and isosceles triangles. Um, of course, an isosceles triangle is any triangle with at least two equal sides. The two equal sides are known as the legs, and the other side is known as the base. Um, another thing to be aware of is that if we have two equal sides, we will also have two equal angles. So the angles across from the legs are going to be congruent. Those are going to be called our base angles. Um, anytime we have two congruent sides, we must have congruent angles. That also works going the other way. So if you are given a triangle with two equal angles, it means that two of the sides must also be congruent. Um, and here's how we can use this as an example. So we need to name two unmarked congruent angles. So if we look at our picture, they have given us two congruent sides. If we have two congruent sides in our triangle, we must have congruent angles. So what we're going to do is just mark the angles that are opposite the two congruent sides. So the two angles that we know to be congruent, even though they weren't marked, are angle A, B, C, and angle A, C, B. As far as our unmarked congruent segments, kind of work it the other way around. We notice that they gave us two congruent angles in this triangle here. It means ADC has to be isosceles. We look at it, we said the congruent sides are always across from the congruent angles. Therefore, AD must be congruent to AC. I will leave examples 1A and 1B to you. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so isosceles triangles, we said, have two equal angles and two equal sides. Equilateral triangles mean that all three sides are the same. If all three sides are the same, then the angles must be the same as well. If all three angles are the same, and they must equal 180, or add up to 180 rather, take the 180, split it into three parts. This means in every equilateral triangle, the angles are going to be 60 degrees. How can we use this? Let's look at example two. Okay, it says find each measure. I need to know angle Y. And I need to know side YZ. Well, if I have two equal sides, I have to have two equal angles. One angle is already 60 degrees, and I know all three side angles, sorry, all three angles have to add to 180. So I take the 180, subtract the 60 that I know. That means I have 120 degrees left over. Split that equally across two angles, and that tells me that each angle should be 60 degrees. So notice, even though they didn't tell me it was an equilateral triangle, I pretty much now confirmed it because I got the same three angles for all, or same three values for all three angles. What's that measure Y then? 60 degrees. If all three angles are 60 degrees, that means the three sides are all congruent. So if I have 8 here and 8 here, I need an 8 here. So how big is YZ? It is 8. All right, 2A and 2B, you can work out on your own. Again, remember that those little marks in the corner mean that the angles are congruent. So you're most likely looking at an isosceles triangle. 
Um, for example three, it's going to be the same thing we were just doing, only now they've thrown in some equations. So we look at it. We need to find the variable x and the variable y. x starts us off with the angles, right? We notice we have two congruent sides, which means I need two congruent angles. And if you're looking at that saying we already have two congruent angles, you're right. But remember, the angles that we know to be congruent are always across from the congruent sides. Therefore, angle C and angle B have to match. Well, if I have a 2x in angle B, then I need a 2x next to angle C. Even if we don't realize that all three of them are now the same, we know they have to add to 180. So if you are solving it out algebraically and you can't remember what the angles are supposed to be in an equilateral triangle, we just set up the formula and solve. So if I add 2x, 2x, and 2x, it gives me 6x. Divide out the 6 so we know x equals 30. There we go. If all the angles are the same, it means all the sides are the same. So if we have a 3 over here, we need a 3 over here and a 3 over here. I look at my formula. I see 4y minus 5 is where the 3 is supposed to go, so that tells me that 4y minus 5 has to equal 3. Now we can solve it out. And get the y. Alright, I will leave the final question to you. That's all we have for today. I will see you next time.